Welcome back to Not Enough Projects. Today we're working on this 91 Mazda NA Miata with clutch issues. It's draining the clutch reservoir in basically one trip and the clutch is super mushy. So more than likely we've got failed seals in the master or the slave or both probably. So let's dig in and get both those replaced. Should be a pretty simple job. All right, so we'll start off by popping this line off. 10 millimeter line nut. It's pretty tight, so we're gonna use a line wrench. These don't spread as much as your normal open wrenches, so that's why you use them on lines. You don't run them off. We also want to stuff some rags down here to catch any spilled brake fluid since it does strip paint. You can rebuild Masters and Slaves. If you want to see that, you can check out the Packard where I rebuilt a whole bunch of ancient brake hydraulics. But honestly, a lot of times it's just more effective to replace it. A lot less work and it's basically the same price. So you might as well just replace them when they're available. I'll just pull a hard line out. So I'll do the firewall with these clips. Just a little bit more wiggle room to work with. And then the master cylinder's held onto the firewall with two 12 millimeter nuts. Hopefully this is a stud that we don't need to hold onto from the other side. Otherwise, this day is gonna get a lot worse. Yeah, it looks like they're studs, so. Otherwise, we'd have to crawl under there and stand on our heads to get to it. And out comes the master. You can see this one's a pretty easy to work with style where the master doesn't have a plunger going through. A lot of cars have a plunger that's attached to the master and you actually have to bolt it to the clutch pedal. This one, the push rod stays in the car, so that makes it a lot easier on us. You can also see we're leaking from the backside. There's a plunger in here and it has seals here and probably another seal at the end. There may be a seal in the middle, I don't know the exact style. But the rubber deteriorates and it lets the pressure push past the seal and it'll leak into the inside of the car. So if we looked under there in the driver foot well, we'd probably find some brake fluid from the clutch. All right, so here is our new master. There's the power torque part number for it. Doesn't look like it comes with a new gasket to seal against the firewall, so we're gonna have to take that off the old one. All right, let's go ahead and throw a dab of grease into where the push rod rides. Put our gasket on. So she put the gasket on the cover. Then we can just throw our nuts back on. I'll go ahead and snug them up. Now these you don't need to go crazy tight, obviously. You just want them nice and snug so that they're not gonna come loose. All right, and then we take off our protection cap. And then we'll probably just want to do a quick bench bleed. It basically just gets the cavity where the plunger rides full of fluid, or else we're going to be pumping forever trying to get fluid down to the slave cylinder. All right, so let's go ahead and fill the reservoir up. Good enough for now. You can see the bubbles coming out. That's good. All right, so now you're gonna want somebody to go in the car and help you on this part. You'll definitely wanna throw a rag down to pick up any spilled fluid. You're basically just gonna use your finger like a check valve. So go ahead and pump, slow. And you should feel pressure and suction. And you can see, got fluid spitting out, that's good. So now we're good to go. Go ahead and reconnect our line. So on these line nuts, you gotta be careful to make sure you're not cross-threading. You should be able to get it almost all the way in by hand. Okay, and then we'll just get it nice and snug. Clean up any brake fluid we missed. 
put a cap on for now. All right, now we can go ahead and move on under the car to the slave cylinder. I don't know if you can say that anymore, but that's what it is. All right, so here's our slave cylinder right here. You can see it's wet with transmission fluid, but I don't know if it's actually leaking. It doesn't seem too bad, but the seal failed, so we've got it. It's probably the original one, so we'll go ahead and yank her off. All right, so you can see where the line comes in right here. It's kind of a tricky one to get to. And then we've got 12 millimeter bolts, just like the master here and here. The lower one we can get to with a wrench probably. The upper one we're gonna have to get to with a ratchet. So we'll go ahead and pop the line off to start with. It wasn't tight. So we get the nut, line nut off, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull our line out. Drip, so watch out for that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the lower 12 millimeter bolt. Just get at it with a wrench. And now our slave cylinder should be free. All right, so here's our old one. You can see the boot failed. The slave doesn't actually look terrible. I don't think it was leaking in there, but with the failed boot, I mean, this was cheap enough. Might as well replace it. it actually look like, looks like we might have a slight difference here with the end. You can see we've just got a little nub there versus a pretty long one right there. So we'll have to see if that's gonna cause us any issues. And then here's our bleeder. We're gonna need to access that once we get back in and bleed it just like you would brakes. So the longer nub on the end of our push rod isn't gonna cause us any issues because it goes through a hole on the clutch release arm. It's just to help index the slave cylinder push rod. All right, once we've got our bolts in there and as far as we can get them by hand, we just go ahead and torque them up. All right, so now same deal as the master. Remove our little protective cap. I just want to make sure the end of the line is clean. Because it's pretty grimy down here. Push it back up and in. All right, so the slave line's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get back on because it can get tweaked when you take the old slave cylinder off. You just gotta kinda mess around with it until you can get it to thread in. So now we're ready to go ahead and bleed the brakes. We're gonna wanna fill the master cylinder reservoir all the way to the top. You can see we lost all of it while we were uh, messing around with the slave cylinder. So we're gonna fill it all the way to the top and then the slave has that bleeder I showed. It's an eight millimeter hex. You can just use a wrench. You'll just have somebody put the clutch pedal down. You'll open the bleeder, close it, pull back up, check the fluid often or else you're gonna have to do it multiple times. Same deal as uh, brakes, so yeah. And you're just gonna keep doing it until there's no air coming out of the bleeder. I like to put a clear vinyl line on so you can see, for two reasons, so you can see the fluid coming out, you'll see if there's bubbles and also it doesn't spray everywhere, it goes into a bottle instead. So let's start doing it. All right, got it bled. So I kind of found the best way to do it is to loosen the bleeder a little bit, put your finger over the top and do like the check valve thing and have them pump it. And you'll eventually, it'll build enough pressure, it'll start shooting fluid past your finger. Go ahead and have them stay down, tighten the bleeder, pump it a bunch of times, and honestly, it kind of just self-bleeds. If I tried to bleed it like I normally would, it didn't seem to bleed properly, so I don't know. Your mileage may vary, but that's kind of what worked for us. Now we're getting full clutch travel, and the pedal feels great, so go ahead and call that fixed. 